Boys and girls, lend me your ears. Our good friend Smokey Bear is here to speak to you about a very important subject. Folks, meet Smokey Bear! Thank you, thank you. Friends, today I'd like to talk to you about our country, yours and mine, and how we can keep it beautiful. We're gathered here to discuss a big problem, I fear. The country's getting sloppy. It's something you should know. And we've got a duty to go to the people. We've got to tell them so. We've got a duty to go to the people. We've got to tell them so. It used to be that our country was pretty to see. But folks are getting careless. They're ruining it all. So we have to go to the people and tell them they must get on the ball. So we have to go to the people and tell them they must get on the ball. We are in a predicament and it's getting quite bad. We are losing the things we had. And so I say that each of us must find a way to try to make our country the way it used to be. We have to preserve all the beautiful things that we would like to see. We have to preserve all the beautiful things that we would like to see. We'd like to see. We'd like to see. We'd like to see the beautiful things we'd like to see. You're right. It's about time something was done. And how? Just take a look at the dirty streets. Not to mention the highways and picnic areas, which are disgraceful. And dirty rivers and lakes. And what about the wasting of water? And what about the dirty air? And why aren't the wild animals given more protection? Don't forget about forest fires. Here, here, here now. Settle down. Now we're getting to my plan. These vital subjects should be brought to the attention of the public. If we could think up some slogans like, uh... Remember the Alamo! Remember the Maine! 5440 or fight! Put a tiger in your tank! That's the idea. But we have to get the slogans that fit our subjects. I will now appoint each of you to do a special investigation about these problems and let us know what can be done. Uh, Kitty Hawk, see what can be done about cleaning the air. Wonderful! Uh, J.P. Bug, you investigate the dirty streets. Okay. Eager Beaver... I want you to take care of water saving. Right, Chief. Uh, Teddy Moose, you see what can be done about protecting wild animals. Bully. Uh, Lady Bluebird, your project will be to make the highways beautiful. Certainly, Mr. Smokey. Virginia Eel, see what can be done to keep our lakes and rivers clean. Aye, aye, sir. Next week, we'll meet to hear your reports and also the special slogans for our campaign. Now... Let's close the meeting with our theme song. Everybody sing! Let's keep America beautiful. Keep this land beautiful. Let's get together and we'll all pitch in to beautify the USA.
somebody stepped on me. I'm sorry. Oh, it's you, Virginia Eel. Why were you put in charge of cleaning the water? Well, I... Yes, you're such a little thing. What good can you do? Well, I... Mr. Bug is smaller than I am. But I have so many relatives. And you have such a small family. And not very important at that. I do wish you would like me. I like all of you. What's going on? I thought all of you would be busy on your projects. We're trying to find out what little Virginia Eel can do. Not everyone can do a lot. Some can only do a little bit. But every little bit helps. But what can she do? I'll tell you what she can do. You see, an eel is a scavenger. A scavenger? What's a scavenger? A scavenger is an animal that eats all sorts of things. Nothing in particular, but generally the type of things that uh, nobody else wants. Hmm. You mean garbage. You can say that. By eating the garbage in the water, she's helping to keep the water clean. And you know that's important. See, I am good for something. The government starting to love the eel. Make me feel warm and real. The government loves me, so why don't you love me too? I live in the oceans and rivers and streams that belong to Uncle Sam. They call me a scavenger and I don't mind, that's exactly what I am. I feast upon garbage and things like that. It gives me my vitamin C. And to my good fortune, my Sorry, Virginia. We didn't think someone so small could be so useful and so important. Yes, we apologize. All apologies accepted. Now I can tell you how people can help to keep the rivers and lakes clean. How? By remembering not to throw garbage in the water or on the shore when you're on a picnic or out camping or at the beach. Put it in the trash can. That's where it belongs. But you like garbage. That's true. But nature puts enough food in the water to keep me and my family well fed. Good. Now that this is cleared up, we can proceed. What's your project, Smokey? Fire prevention and the protection of our forests. When you go to the woods to picnic, it can be quite a spree. But won't you take some care? Think of this old bear and remember me. After you finish roasting hot dogs, I hope that you will agree to put that fire out. Leave no trace or doubt. Just remember me. Take 
take a tip from Smokey Bear and take care of our forests and parks. Water doesn't hurt and use a little dirt and you'll put out those sparks. When you finish the place you picnic should be pretty to see. So keep it nice and clean. Forests should be green. Just remember you know who. And do everything I tell you to do. Only you can prevent a fire. And it's done easily. Just think of every rule that you learned in school. And remember if you happen to use some matches, use them so carefully. You should know by now, fire spread somehow. Just remember me. Always pick your litter up, every paper cup and each plate. All those cans must go, no one has to know. You wait. If you follow these regulations, we will all guarantee that you'll enjoy it too every time that you just remember. You know who and do everything Smokey tells you. I tell you. He tells you. Protect everyone, including you. Flash! Lady Bluebird has just been seen flying over the Pennsylvania Turnpike, headed out towards Chicago. Miss Bluebird, Miss Bluebird. Would you make a statement about highways? Oh, oh, I certainly would. I have never been so furious. I expected to take a delightful little trip. And this is such a beautiful season when all the trees and grass are so green. So, what do I find? A mess! Well, look at that roadside rest. I don't see much green. There's pink, yellow, purple, and red, and, and oh, what is all this? Litter, all litter. Candy wrappers, gum wrappers, bottles, paper plates, a half a cheese sandwich, apple cores, and a dozen other things. Oh, it's a disgrace. And look over there, where the cars are going by. Careless people are tossing things out of their car windows. There goes a banana peel. What do you think should be done? A very simple suggestion. People should keep a litter bag in their cars. A litter bag? That's rather big, no? No, just a little brown paper bag or <laughs> whatever color goes with your car's interior. Then people can put all their litter or trash in the bag. Precisely. Then, when they stop at a service station, they can drop the litter in a trash can. It's convenient and we'll keep the highways clean. Keep the little basket in your automobile Right up in front, right next to the wheel Keep the little basket in your automobile And you keep the highways clean all the litter in a little brown sack It isn't hard once you get the knack Empty all the litter in a little brown sack And you keep the highways clean If you're picnicking Just take some care Pick up all the papers Don't leave them there Now 
why don't you all sing along with me? Keep a little basket in your automobile. All the litter in a little brown sack It isn't hard once you get the knack Empty all the litter in a little brown sack And you'll keep the highways clean If you're picnicking Just take some care Pick up all the papers Don't leave them there and keep a little basket in your automobile You'll be surprised how good you will feel For with a little basket in your automobile You will keep the highways nice and clean We are now meeting to hear Teddy Moose Tell us about how to protect the wild animals. Teddy, I always thought that it should be the other way around. We should be protected from the wild animals. That's the way it was in the old days. Today, people need not fear wild animals as we are well protected. But do you know that some animals like the heath hen and the passenger pigeon have completely disappeared? And about a hundred years ago, the prairies had buffalo herds as far as the eye could see. But today, there are very few buffaloes remaining. And birds like the whooping crane and the California condor are almost extinct. Extinct? That means all gone. But why does it happen? Well, some people are careless and greedy. If they would only think, they would realize how valuable every animal is, both the big ones and the small ones. Really? Certainly to keep nature in balance. Every mountain lion must have a mountain sheep. Why a mountain sheep? In order to keep a balance of nature. For if a mountain lion doesn't have a mountain sheep, the lion might come down to the village and kill a few of the farmer's cows. And that's not very good now, is it? A red fox might make a farmer mad. They think he's bad. But even here is a balance of nature. For while a fox might once in a while eat a farmer's prize hen, which isn't very nice. The fox also eats a lot of rats and mice, the same as a cat. So even that is a balance of nature. And take the case of Virginia Eel. She makes a meal of the garbage in the water. So she really has a purpose and keeps a balance of nature. And even certain insects do their share. And so they're there for a balance of nature. Some of them fertilize soil or eat other pests. And some are just plain food for a hungry bird in her brood. Which is all part of being a balance of nature. It's really very simple. Don't you agree? You see, every bear must have a bee. And just like a he must have a she, even a dog must have a flea. In order that we keep a balance of nature. Gee, we don't want to lose any more animals. What should we do? Follow the rules set by the rangers in charge of wildlife. 
Teachers and librarians will be glad to show you where to get this information. Remember, without animals, there would be no life. Now we have Mr. J.P. Bug. J.P. stands for just plain. How are you, Mr. Bug? I'm mad. Why? Because all the signs around here telling people not to litter say, don't be a litter bug. And that's not fair. Well, I don't understand. Bugs don't litter, people do. Why blame us? They call a litter bug someone who litters. And that's a charge that's quite ridiculous. So very neat, the ant is, and so's the praying mantis. So why blame us? I've never met a bumblebee who litters. I've never seen a gnat that makes a fuss. A tissue-dropping hornet? Why, one has not been born yet. So why blame us? It isn't very fair that people blame the bug. It isn't true at all, and I'm ashamed. The animals don't litter, we must all agree. So honestly, the people should be blamed. I've never known a locust to be sloppy. And if you blame a fly, he'd make a fuss. And if you blame a cricket, the crickets all would pick it. We bugs are getting very furious. Why must we get the boo for things the humans do? Why blame us? <laughs> I see your point, Mr. Bug. However, littering is a problem, no matter who does it. What do you suggest? Well, I have several suggestions. For example, a scout troop had a pickup day. They got together and cleaned up a lot, filled with trash, got rid of the papers and bottles and everything else. In fact, it was so nice, they even made a garden out of it by planting all sorts of shrubs and flowers. What a fine thing to do. We should have more campaigns like that. Others might take a lesson from this and start a cleanup campaign, too. Well, now, this would be wonderful. Just like forest fire prevention, littering is something that people can do something about. Most definitely. And children can help, too, by making sure they use a litter basket for their candy wrappers and ice cream sticks. They could set an example for grown-ups to follow. True. This is a case where both kids and grown-ups should set good examples for each other. What a difference it would make if everyone remembered not to throw their litter in the street. Hold on to the paper or whatever until you find a litter basket. There's no excuse for a messy town. Look up in the sky. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's a bird. It's Kitty Hawk, the Clean Air Commissioner. <coughs> Uh, yeah, yes, I'm Kitty Hawk from the Black Hills of South Dakota. <laughs> but I seem to have caught a cold. Funny, I don't feel sick. Well, how do you like the city, Miss Hawk? Well, it's very nice. <coughs> oh, but, but, but I seem to have caught a cold or something. You get some time. Sorry to hear that. You look fine, though. Well, perhaps I have something in my <coughs> throat. <laughs> well, perhaps it's just the air pollution. Oh, is that what they meant by air pollution? Well, I could hardly breathe. <laughs> Where is my handkerchief? Oh, oh, oh I have it. <sighs> What's happened? What have they done? They're spoiling city air. They're spoiling city air. There is smoke from chimneys that makes a body cough and sneeze. The city's like breathing into a box of soot and dust and carbon monoxide, and it's getting bad, I fear. 
What are they doing here? I could never stay long in a city that's that Till they clean up the mess that's infesting the atmosphere Some people have been trying to do something about the air pollution. Yes, I've heard. They have filters to cut down on the exhaust fumes from cars, and any chimney that smokes too much should be inspected and repaired. If we see thick black smoke pouring from a chimney, we should notify the owner. He might not be aware of the problem. Remember, there is no such thing as a small amount of air pollution. Show me some air that's pure That's what we need for sure It is very nice to know That they've invented filters So they're going to do something for the folks Before pollution conquers and chokes them and I'm glad that people care there'll be filters everywhere it's so good to know they're doing something for it to get rid of the suit in our beautiful city air Me. Oh, no, we haven't. How are things with you, eager beaver, water-saving commissioner? Pitiful, just pitiful. Here we are in the middle of a drought, and people still waste water. The city is sending inspectors around to check on leaks and breaks in water mains. True, that does save some water, but don't wait for the inspectors. All of us must do our own share to save many gallons a day. How? Well, aside from having leaky water faucets repaired, there are other ways. For instance, instead of letting water run till it gets cold, put a pitcher of water in the refrigerator, and it will be nice and cold when you want a drink. Very good. Any more? Don't let the water run when you're washing dishes. Fill up the sink, and when you're shampooing your hair, get it wet and soapy, and turn off the faucet. Don't let the water run. Fascinating. And save the rinse water when you're washing clothes. You can use that to mop the floor. You are brilliant. Nothing to it. If everybody does things like that, you'd be surprised how much water will be saved. We've got to save some water. It's something we oughta. We've got to save some water. So what do you say? The reservoir holds water, but it's at its border. We've got to save some water. Let's do it today. Never let that faucet drip. It's not a lot, you think. But if we don't stop, each little drop we won't have enough to drink so every son and daughter you've got to save water it's something that you ought to do start saving some water today it hasn't rained for a month or so the river's running dry we've got to to do something very soon and everyone must try so when you take a shower don't stay for an hour we've got to save some water we must find a way don't let it run forever it's not very clever we've got to save some water let's start right away when you Brush your teeth each day There's something you should know If the water's gushing While you are brushing You are wasting H2O So every son and daughter You've got to save water And take that as an order To start saving some water 
It is one week later and time for the meeting. Let's drop in and see what's happening. Will the meeting please come to order? I'd like to thank all of you for the fine jobs you did. I hope that everyone will take heed of your important messages. As I said before, a good way to help people remember is with a slogan. So we'll now hear from our commissioners. First, the Keep Highways Clean Commissioner, Miss Lady Bluebird. Keep the highways cleaner by far with a litter bag in your car. Wonderful. And now, Teddy Moose, in charge of wildlife preservation. Protect wildlife and you will preserve all life. Very good. And now, Virginia Eel, in charge of keeping the waters clean. By the sea, by the sea, by the beautiful sea. Let's keep it that way for you and me. Fine. And Eager Beaver, Commissioner of Water Saving. Don't be all wet. Save water. Excellent. And now, Kitty Hawk, in charge of keeping the air clean. Filter, filter, rah, rah, rah. Out goes the bad air, in goes the good air. Very good to know. And you, J.P. Bug, Commissioner of Keeping the Streets Clean. The USA will glitter if you don't litter. Very well done, all of you. What's your slogan, Smokey? Mine? Why, remember, only you can prevent forest fires. And only you, and you, and you can help keep America beautiful. Recognize it 